Hi there, welcome back. Today I want to talk about how we can forecast time series with ARIMA models. And in order to understand ARIMA models, first we need to understand what time series are. So a time series is basically a sequence where we record a metric over regular intervals. And in this case, we will talk about stock prices. And forecasting refers to the future values that this sequence will take. In this example, we're going to go through a price series that is formed out of Microsoft bars that include the open, high, low, and close, and a couple of other features. But we're only going to be using the close price because we're going to only use this feature to predict the future values. And this is called univariate time series forecasting. Now that we know all of this, ARIMA models, which is short for autoregressive integrated moving average, is a forecasting algorithm that takes into account previous past values to predict future values because it considers that the information that is found in those past values can be indicative of future uh, values. So in short, ARIMA models explain a time series based on its past values, basically its lags and its lagged forecast errors. So an ARIMA model is characterized by three terms. And these are the most important things that you need to know in order to be able to fit an ARIMA model. And these are P, D, and Q, all right? So P refers to the order of the autoregressive term. D is the order of differencing in order to make the time series stationary. And Q is the order of the moving average term. Now we're going to go through all of these three and I'm going to explain how they are calculated and how you can actually get these values so that they are mapped perfectly to your specific problem. But as we see from these terms, we realize that what we actually need to have in order to be able to fit an ARIMA model is a stationary time series, okay? So the time series needs to be stationary and you might be wondering what is stationarity? Now stationarity refers to the fact that the price series in this case is mean reverting. And as we know, most price series aren't mean reverting because otherwise it would be super easy for us to be able to profit from, uh, from the stock market because we would only buy low and sell high or the opposite, okay? We would short high and then buy low. But we know that this is not the case because prices don't mean revert usually and the ones that do are very rare. But what we do know is that the returns are more likely to mean revert because they are uh, distributed randomly around a zero mean. So coming back to the ARIMA model, we know that now we need a stationary time series in order to be modeled by an ARIMA model. But why is that? And the answer lies in the autoregressive term in the actual name. Because it's autoregressive, it means that the model is a linear regression that uses its own lags as predictors. Now, linear regression, as we know, works best when the features, when the predictors aren't dependent on each other. Because if they are dependent, that means we will run into the problem of multicollinearity. In that scenario, if these predictors are correlated, our linear regression will be unstable and it might not reach a result. So it's super important for our predictors, for our variables to be independent from each other, to not be correlated. And therefore, that's why we need to make sure that our uh, series is stationary or at least close to stationarity because we might not be able to reach perfect stationarity. And that's not necessarily a problem, but nevertheless, the whole point here is to get uh, to a stationary time series if we can, but at least to have a mildly stationary time series to be able to model it uh, with an ARIMA model. Now, as I said earlier, price series usually are non-stationary, but we can get stationarity if we get the returns because those guys revert to the mean. That is exactly what differencing is. Now let's go through a practical example through this Microsoft price series so we can see exactly how everything works and then we're going to explain 
all of the terms that are required by the ARIMA model to be actually fitted to the data. Okay, so let's go ahead. The first thing that we're going to do, of course, is import the necessary libraries. And we're going to read our Microsoft hourly data. This is over one year. Let's actually see the head. And we can see we have the open, high, low, close, volume, average, and bar count. But we're only going to be using the close. So let's just create a copy of this data frame with just the close feature. And if we describe it, we can see these stats. So now you might be wondering, how can we find out whether a, a price series is stationary? And that is done through the augmented Dickey Fuller test. And what the ADF test does, it tries to prove the null hypothesis wrong, all right? And our null hypothesis is that the time series is non-stationary. So if we prove that the time series is not non-stationary, then there is a huge probability that it is stationary. And that is what the ADF test does. So if the p-value of the test is less than the significance value of point. Uh, zero 05, then we can reject the null hypothesis and infer that the time series might be stationary. So in our case, if the p-value will be higher than 0 0.05, we'll actually need to find the order of differencing. And you're going to see that if we run this, okay, so we're going to import add filler from stats models, and then we're going to apply it on the close prices. We can see that we get a p-value of 0.95. So <laughs> it's quite high, right? So it's clear that this price series is not stationary. Now, most prices are non-stationary because otherwise, as I was saying, we would all be super rich by just buying low and selling high. So in order to make these ARIMA models work, we need to difference them. So in this case, we will need to compute the returns as they usually randomly distribute around a zero mean. We just simply need to subtract the previous value from the current value. Now, if we just difference once, we might not get a stationary series. So even the returns, if we just difference once, won't be stationary. So we might need to difference multiple times. We will need to get the returns of the returns. And therefore, we can have multiple orders of differencing. And that is the D term in our uh, ARIMA model. And the minimum number of differencing operations that we need to make this actual time series stationary needs to be imputed in our model. So if the time series is already stationary, D is zero. But otherwise, we will going to need to input the order of differencing that is suited for our time series. And the way we can do this manually to find the order of differencing, we can actually use the ACF plot from stats models. And the ACF plot tells us how many terms are required to remove any autocorrelation in the series. If we run this, we're going to first plot our close price. And we just need to add this so that it only plots it once. Because if I will run it without that, we would get two plots. So we just have to add this and run it again. So we see we only plot it once. It's like an error in the plot ACF method. So we can see our original price series and the autocorrelation. After we difference it once, we can see that we're getting the returns of the close price. We can see that now our returns, they randomly distribute around the mean of zero and the autocorrelation plot looks like this. Now, if we would difference them twice, let me just add this so we don't double this. Again, it's not much of a difference when we difference twice uh, relative to once, okay? So our autocorrelation plot looks pretty similar. It's just that in the second differencing, the lag goes into the far negative compared to the first order of differencing. So that may indicate that the series might have been over differenced. So therefore, we're, we're just going to choose our uh, order of differencing as one. 
Of course, we can also use the PMD ARIMA package to get the number of differencing. And this is a very, very helpful package. All we have to do, we have to install it. It's simple. We can install it with pip env, install and PMD ARIMA, or we can install directly with pip install PMD ARIMA. And then we import ndifs. And it's very simple. We just get the number of differencing for the close prices and we're going to run the ADF, ADF test exactly how we run it manually above. And if we run this, we will get one, which is the number of differencing that is required to make this series stationary. And we got the same result by analyzing the ACF plots. If we look at the API reference for PMD ARIMA, we can see that ndifs estimate the ARIMA differencing term. This is super helpful for you guys to use in, uh, in your own application so that you don't have to do this manually and look at plots and decide uh, manually if uh, one or two or whatever order of differencing is appropriate for your problem. So you can use ndifs just to get the order of differencing. This saves you a whole lot of, uh, of time. Let's go ahead and talk about the other terms in our ARIMA model and P P is the order of the autoregressive term, okay? So the AR part of the ARIMA model. It refers to the number of lags to be used as predictors. Now, we can find the number of required AR terms if we inspect the partial autocorrelation plot. So not the autocorrelation plot, but the partial autocorrelation plot. So the partial autocorrelation plot represents the correlation between the series and its lags. So if we import this and we get, of course, we're just going to get the first order of differencing because that's the one that we chose for our problem. If we run this and of course we have to add this at the end, we can see that the partial autocorrelation plot looks like this. What we can observe here is that the partial autocorrelation plot lag number six stands out is well above the significance line. So even three and four are a little bit above the significance line. So we could use three, four or six as our uh, P term. But for this example, I'm going to use uh, six. Now the Q term is the order of the moving average term. So it refers to the number of lagged forecast errors that should go in the ARIMA model. So this refers to the MA part of the model. So here we can plot the ACF plot for this specific term. And here we can see that uh, the forecast error three may be suitable for this model. Okay, so we're going to choose three as our Q term. Now that we have these three terms, so we have our P, D and Q term, we have P set to six, we have D set to one, and we have Q set to three. Now, of course the Q, as you saw previously, we might even choose it to be zero. But for this example, we're just going to choose three, just because we can see that the forecast error three is a little bit above the significance line. So we're going to choose three just for this purpose. So all we need to do is import ARIMA from stats models, and then we just have to pass in the series and then specify the order. So six, one, three. And all we need to do then is to fit the model. But before I fit this model, I just wanna thank you guys for subscribing to our channel and for liking our videos because we really wanna help you guys grow in the data science and machine learning space, all right? So let's go ahead and fit this model. If we check the, let me run this. But now if we check our fit method to see what it, takes into account as arguments. We can see disp, just so that you understand why I set disp to zero. Basically, converges information is printed. I'm gonna set it to zero so that it's false. Let's see the result summary. And there you go. These are the ARIMA model results. We can see that our AR terms, we have six AR terms and three MA terms. And these are the coefficients for the linear regression in our case that are a part of this. 
and this is the, the p-value for each of them. Now, if any of these coefficients would be very close to zero, then we could remove that term. So, for example, if the third MA term would be close to zero, then we could remove it and just specify two as uh, necessary in, in the model. And also if the p-value would be very high. So we see all these p-values need to be very, very uh, low so that these terms are important to the model, to our regression model. Now that we know how to read this summary, we can actually plot the residuals and see how they look as well. All right, so the residuals are distributed around the mean of zero. And if we want to see the actual results versus the fitted versus the predicted results, we can just look at the first 60 steps and we're going to set dynamic as false. Let me, again, let me just add this. So we just see one. So you see our predictions, which are the blue ones, they are pretty, pretty close to our actual values. So theoretically, our ARIMA model is fitted correctly.